So the Cooper Carbine is an assault rifle from the Season 1 Battle Pass in Vanguard and Warzone. You can unlock it for free with a weapon challenge in Warzone as well as Vanguard multiplayer and today I'll show you how to complete this challenge to unlock it easily and quickly in Warzone if you don't have Vanguard. Now the main method I'll suggest is only available for a very limited time in Warzone so make sure if you need to unlock the weapon you do it right away before this insanely easy method disappears and I, I do mean that it's incredibly easy so take advantage of it while it's around for the next few days. If it's already gone that's fine there's other methods available which we'll talk about but the main method we'll talk about is is much easier so it's better to do it while you can. So I'm going to quickly explain the challenge give the best class setup and game modes for this and then some quick tips to help you get the challenge done even faster so make sure you stick around until the end of the video so you don't miss out any important tips and then once you unlock this weapon you may want to level it up or unlock gold diamond or atomic camos on this weapon or even make a good class with it if so i'll have some camo guides for this weapon and a guide on how to level up guns fast so check those out if you're interested there'll be a card on screen or a link in the description now this weapon is most easily unlocked in vanguard multiplayer but it's still incredibly easy to unlock in warzone with these very simple tips so the challenge itself says you need to get five headshot kills with an assault rifle in a single match 15 times now a headshot is obviously killing someone by shooting them in the head you'll know you get it because you'll earn a headshot medal popping up on screen and after watching the video if you need more help with getting headshots i made a dedicated guide for this so check it out again card on screen link in the description but for the headshots you don't actually need to be shooting them in the head the whole time as long as the final bullet that kills them reaches their head that will count as a headshot this means you can down them with your assault rifle or another weapon into last stand mode and then shoot them in the head to finish them off therefore if you come across a downed player you could also shoot them in the head as soon as possible and that might count as well what a headshot so just as a quick note sometimes in warzone the weapon ch unlock challenges require a complete Completed matches mean you can't leave early. It doesn't say it for this challenge, so you should be able to leave the matches basically as soon as you get the five headshots and then leave the match, start a new match, and then keep doing the process. But if you notice your progress doesn't track, then obviously stay in the match until it finishes, or otherwise this can mess up or prolong getting the challenge done. So most people should be able to leave, but if you notice there's problems, try and stay in the match and see if that resolves the issue. Now, I believe Cold War, Modern Warfare, and Vanguard assault rifles should all count towards the challenge, but if there's any problems with that, normally it's the case that Vanguard are the safest ones and the other games like Modern Warfare. Cold War, their guns won't always be tracking as properly. So you should be able to use all assault rifles, but any problems again, go for the Vanguard ones because that's the safest option. Also, the pre game lobby kills are unlikely to count for this challenge either. They don't seem to normally count, but obviously, if anyone knows differently about any of this, please do let me know. So, what you want to do obviously when you're in the match is check your kills counted by checking the challenge progress bar in game. During a match, go to the weapons tab, click on edit loadouts, choose a loadout, click on the primary weapon, and go to the assault rifle tab. Scroll down to the list until you see the Cooper Carbine. It's likely at the bottom of the weapon list. And by Hovering over the Cooper Carbine, it will show you how much progress you have made towards unlocking it. You can obviously check this before the match to know what you're on, and then afterwards see if it counted or during a match to see whether getting those five headshots makes your progress go up by one point. Now let's quickly talk about the class setup, then we'll talk about the best map and mode and the kind of overall strategy. So you obviously want to be putting on a assault rifle. It doesn't really matter what one at all. You could go for the SGG44 or anything like that. I wasn't using that. I was using a different weapon just because I was trying to level it up. But it doesn't matter too much. Whatever weapon you go for, it doesn't really matter. You could go, like I say, SGG44 or anything like that. And if you did, here would be some example attachments for the SGG44. Obviously, you want to try and make them as similar as possible to these. Generally, you want attachments that increase your vertical recoil, control, increase ammo capacity or reload speed. Speed and increase your aim down sight, sprint to fire, speed or aim walking movement speed. So those are kind of the things you want to go for. And here are some example attachments for the STG 44s. I would put on the MX silencer, the Krausnik 620mm precision barrel, which actually allows your weapon to be highly accurate and controllable, and it also increases the headshot damage as well. Not all weapons have this, but if your weapon does have this attachment, definitely go for it as the barrel. Then I put on either a slate reflector or a G16 2.5x optic, something that's nice and clean, not too zoomed in, but not too zoomed out, if that makes sense. So just depends whatever best for you that you're normally used to. Then you can put on the Constans Tactical Stock, the Sleight of Hand Perk 1, the Fully Loaded for Perk 2, the Fabric Rear Grip, the 7.62 Gorenko 50 round mags, the Subsonic Ammo and the M1941 Hand Stop Underbarrel. So those are some example attachments but obviously just put on whatever ones you want that sort of give you good recoil, aiming down sight speed, that kind of thing. For the secondary weapon it doesn't really matter what you put on and then for the perks you could put on something like EOD in Perk 1 which allows you to take reduced damage from non kill streak explosives and fire. In Perk 2 you can go for Tempered which allows you to refill armour plates to full with 2 instead of 3 and also equipping the perk also fully restores armour so basically each armour plate has more health associated with it so it's easier and you know you're less likely to be caught off guard doing that in the middle of a gunfight. An alternative could be high alert or overkill it's up to you. For that you could put on another assault rifle but it's up to you guys. And then for the third perk I like putting on Tracker so it allows you to see an imprint of enemy footsteps see where people are on the map and try to find them and kind of hunt them down you know. Then for the equipment the lethal doesn't really matter too much put on whatever 
cover and for the tactical you could put on a stim shot to heal yourself or you could also put on a stun grenade but I normally like going for the stim shot. Then for the field upgrade you want to put on tactical insertion. I know it sounds a bit out there but basically it will allow you to respawn where you place it down upon death obviously and I'll explain why that's important in just a minute so bear with me on that one and I'll explain the reasoning behind that. Now let's quickly talk about the maps and modes you want to be going for in Warzone and then we'll talk about the actual two main strategies one of which is only around for very limited time and like I say it's really really good. So the first main mode you could go for is the Caldera Clash one. This is a limited time mode for the next few days. You want to take advantage of it while you can as it's the best mode by far right now. It's similar to Warzone Rumble so it's sort of a TDM style match but you also get custom loadouts, tons of enemies, small area of the map to play on, infinite respawns, all that kind of good stuff. You know so definitely definitely worth it and then alternatively if you didn't play that if that mode's gone so I recommend playing that one but if, if that's finished and it's not there then just go for Plunder as you have custom loadouts, infinite respawns and no gas cloud but this is you know not anywhere near as efficient as Caldera Clash so if you can go for Caldera Clash if not Plunder it is. So for Plunder just make sure if you're playing it you turn squad fill off on the menu before searching for a match this will mean you don't have teammates on your squad and therefore when you die you can keep respawning where you want to rather than being dragged all over the map to where your teammates are just an important little note to make things a little bit easier on this grind. So now moving on to the actual strategy there's two main strategies there's one for Caldera Clash and the other one obviously being the Plunder strategy so we'll talk about the Caldera Clash one because it's around for the next few days and I recommend that one first of all and then we'll talk about the plunder one afterwards so for caldera clash for that mode if you're playing that you can go around the map getting headshot kills on enemies on roofs you know or in high traffic areas of the map etc that is one way of doing it however the best way right now seeing as there's loads of inactive players in a match the best method right now is to head right to the other side of the map i.e the enemy spawn area and you should see actually lots of afk players that keep dropping in at the back of the map and i'd recommend getting into enemy spawns picking off these inactive players one by one getting as close as you can to the enemy and keep aiming at their head while shooting you know if your gun has a lot of recoil then obviously you have to kind of counteract that but that is my strategy it works really really well you get tons of afk players not in every match but most of them you get tons of free headshots i think in one match i got over like 30 headshots just on inactive players in a few minutes so actually it was really really good really really effective so definitely don't be missing out on this method just be wary of any active players that are lurking near the back of the map because there'll be a few that drop in and try and kill you obviously so just make sure you've always got your wits about you you're keeping an eye out you're not just thinking they're all afk because they won't be but the other thing is to help you find more enemies you can pick up the hunter ability in caldera clash which basically causes all the enemies around you to periodically light up red even through walls so you can see exactly where they are if they're moving if they're afk it just kind of helps you get the one up on them if anyone is moving but it also like i say helps you to see enemies that are inactive through walls just kind of get a rough idea of where they are so that's really useful you can get that you can just find it on the floor if you kill an enemy sometimes they'll drop it so just kind of look out for that hunter ability and there's also speed boost as well which helps you run about a bit more which is useful so yeah either of those is fine but the hunter one is really useful now when the cooldown ends on your tactical insertion you want to place it somewhere near the back of the map that's not too obvious near the enemy spawn area it basically allows you to keep spawning on the enemy side of the map so that's obviously where you want the tactical insertion so keep using that that's a really really good way so you don't have to keep running to the other side of the map every time you die this method will obviously get you lots of kills streaks headshots that kind of thing so you'll get a lot of progress towards your camo challenges really easily it's really beneficial so if you haven't done any camo challenges this will be a good way to do it because it's basically loads of inactive players you also get lots of kills xp that kind of thing this game mode caldera clash is also great for weapon xp so you can level up weapons to the max level really easily in well under an hour with a slightly different strategy so if you need help with leveling up guns fast be sure to check out that guide too again a card on screen and a link in the description so it's not exactly the same as this strategy we're doing today but it's similar so if you want to know how to level, level your weapons fast do check out that video because again this mode is only around for a few more days so that's the main strategy i recommend for caldera clash it works amazingly well you'll literally just quickly get five headshots back out do the same thing again it's really really quick however if caldera clash is no longer around you can also play plunder it's nowhere near as efficient but it still is quite good so when spawning in in plunder you want to head to a high traffic area currently that'll be something like airfields airfields is basically the new storage town area on caldera so it's got lots of enemies and obviously this would mean more kills in a shorter amount of time so you know if you're going to airfields there's loads of potential kills so you want to make sure you've picked up and put on armor and reloaded your weapon before you enter a gunfight otherwise you you might die easily or it will take too long to have to reload and then the person might run away or die that kind of thing and once you shoot an enemy and plunder into the last stand mode you'll need to aim for their head and ensure that the final bullet that kills them is a headshot but all previous bullets before the player is downed don't actually need to be headshots it's just that final bullet so just make sure that once they're downed you shoot the enemy in the head as fast as possible to prevent them from being shot by another player or you getting shot and dying or the enemy killing themselves before you can actually get a headshot on them and like i say just make sure that that final bullet is a headshot and then you're 
all good. So another method which is a little bit more frowned upon, although I've talked about killing AFK players today, so you know, our moral standards aren't too high in this video, but um, another method for plunder is if you stay in the plane until it reaches the end of the flight path, all of the inactive players will be kicked out of the plane and dropped to the grounds. Obviously you just want to go up to them and get headshots, but if there are any active players, obviously you want to kill them first. Now this is actually potentially a few easy headshots here, but be careful as lots of players do try this. I don't know if it's used as much at the moment, but it used to be a lot in the past. They always try and exploit this strategy, so if there's any active players, kill them first and then go for the inactive ones, otherwise you're likely to die and then it'll all be for nothing. So that's kind of the two main strategies. The last thing I wanted to quickly do is talk about the tips for headshots and then we'll talk about what to do if you're struggling with all this still in Warzone. So. My tips for headshots, obviously you want to aim for the head where you see their head or where you expect someone's head to be. Don't rush too much, try to line up the shot if possible. You also want to adjust your sensitivity or aim down sight sensitivity if needed to be higher or lower. You could also warm up in custom games like for example in Vanguard with bots if you're struggling and also make use of the pre-game lobby kills for practice in Warzone as well just for practicing getting headshots. A slower playstyle may always help and you could also use like I said stun grenades to stun or confuse enemies which will mobilize them and make them an easier target for getting headshots. You also want to watch your minimap, UAV and compass just to find where enemies are on the map and you also want to look out for enemies in windows, doorways, behind cover or a prone as this is easier to aim for the head, it kind of makes it an easier target. And also check spawns, kind of like we said with the Caldera Clash, just check any kind of spawn areas that might be suitable for getting some headshots. Now if you struggle to complete the challenge in Warzone then you want to look out for the occasional limited time modes. So for example if you've missed out on the Caldera Clash strategy, wait for that to come back and as soon as it does you know make use of it. Other modes might come back like Warzone Rumble or anyone's like that obviously if they do make sure to use it and also if you still get sick of this you can also make use of the free to play weekends which crop up from time to time basically you can play Vanguard multiplayer and all zombies for free normally over a weekend or something they come every few months to get the challenge done a bit faster so look out for any free to play weekends and that is pretty much everything so hopefully that should help you to unlock the Cooper Carbine in Warzone if you want to unlock it in Vanguard I'll have a separate guide for that and if you want to unlock other weapons like the new sniper rifle from season one or the well gun then feel free to check out my guide for that. Also feel free to check out, like I say, my guide on how to level up weapons insanely fast in Warzone, how to level up your weapons in Vanguard, multiplayer or zombies, how to level up the battle pass, camo guides, anything like that. Feel free to check it out, it's all on my channel. And if you found this video useful, be sure to leave a like on it so you can help other people find the video too. And feel free to subscribe with your post notifications turned on by clicking the bell icon if you found the video useful and you want to stay up to date with all my latest guides with weapon unlock videos, weapon XP and battle pass guides, all that kind of stuff. If you need any of that, stay tuned to the channel. And when we hit 30,000, and subscribers I'm going to be doing a COD points giveaway as well so I hope you find this useful thank you so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you all on the next video